3. The First Death When I woke up, I was in a strange bed, in a strange room. I looked round in surprise. Where was I? What had happened? I turned my head. Someone was sitting beside the bed. It was my dear friend Henry Clerval. My dear Henry, I cried. How glad I am to see you. But why are you here? What has happened? Thank God you're alive, Victor, Henry said. Your house was struck by lightning last night. A fire started and the house was burned to the ground. All your books and papers were destroyed. There is nothing left of your laboratory. I smiled. I don't care, Henry, I said. I was tired of my work. My ideas were wrong. But tell me, Henry, what are you doing in Heidelberg? Your father sent me, Henry said. When you did not ride, he became worried. What is wrong, Victor? You look very pale and ill. Nothing is wrong now, I said. I was working too hard, but that is finished now. I don't want to talk about it any more, Henry. Tell me the news from Geneva. Everyone is well, Henry answered. Your family send you their love, and I am coming to the university to study. My father has agreed at last. I am going to study languages. I was very happy that Henry had come to Heidelberg. The past years seemed like a dream. Thank God. The fire had destroyed the terrible monster. I knew now that my work had been very wicked. I hated science now. I decided to study languages with Henry. The months passed. Slowly I became stronger and happier. I was a young man. I made friends and began to enjoy life again. Winter passed and spring. Then, in May, a letter came from my father. As I began to read it, I gave a terrible cry. My God, Victor, what's wrong? Henry asked. Is it bad news? Terrible news, I answered. My brother, William, is dead. Dead? Henry repeated. Has there been an accident? Not an accident, I answered. My dear brother, only ten years old, has been killed. Murdered. I must go home at once. I got ready for my journey like a man in a dream. I said goodbye to Henry and left Heidelberg for the last time. The long journey went quickly. Soon I was looking at the villages and mountains near Geneva. I had not seen my home for nearly four years. In the afternoon of the twentieth day, I arrived at a small village about half a kilometre from Geneva. It was the place where my brother had been murdered. I decided to stay the night in the village. I wanted to see the place where William had died. It was a beautiful place. I stood there thinking about my brother. Why had anyone wanted to kill him? I could not understand it. It was nearly dark now. I heard thunder. Lightning began to flash in the mountains. Something moved behind a tree. There was another flash of lightning. For a moment I saw everything clearly. There was something huge and terrible there. Something bigger than any man. It was the monster. There was a wicked smile on his yellow, wrinkled face. I suddenly understood. The monster was not dead. He had not died in the fire. And now the monster had killed my brother. I gave a cry. The monster turned away. I ran after him, but he was moving too fast. A few minutes later, I saw him climbing up the side of the mountain. The monster was faster and stronger than any man. I knew that I could not catch him. I had made a monster. And the monster had murdered my brother. How could I tell my father? I could not tell him the truth. He would not believe me. My mind was full of terror and fear. But I could not tell anyone my terrible secret. I went on to Geneva with a sad heart.